where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Our society values things. I guess the idea is the more you have, the richer you are, and the more secure you feel. We all get caught up in our culture's materialism every once in a while. But being rich or having everything our heart desires gives a false sense of security, if any at all. At any moment, something could happen to wipe out that kind of security completely. A fire, tornado, or other natural disaster could destroy all you've accumulated over the years. A sickness or a loss of a job could leave you penniless. Or as we've seen recently, a pandemic could leave you feeling helpless, vulnerable, and alone. Jesus dealt with this issue in his parable of the rich fool. He warned us in Luke 12, 15, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he told a parable. This is from Luke 12, 16 through 21. The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. The rich man in the parable was already rich at the beginning. He didn't need this new abundant crop. He didn't even want to sell it. He wanted to keep it. Why? Possibly because if he had a good crop, so did everyone else. So the price would be low. If he waited to sell it, he'd get a higher price. One way or the other, the rich man was just being greedy. Jesus' point was that our wealth should be God-centered, not self-centered. And if we treat our money and things as ours instead of his, what we do with it will not please God. Did you see our but God in here? While the rich man boasts to himself and makes selfish plans, God has other plans for him. His soul would be required to answer for the life that he had lived. Would he be prepared? No. He was rich in the world's eyes, but poor in God's eyes. He didn't have a relationship with the Lord. His treasure had been laid up for himself on earth. He had none in heaven. Jesus goes on to say that the opposite is also true. Just as we shouldn't store up material possessions, we should also not be worried or anxious for what we don't have. If we're seeking God's kingdom, He will take care of us. Our treasure will be stored in heaven if our heart is there. The following passage in Luke 12, 22-34 is such a beautiful passage and definitely worth your reading through today. As Christians, we should neither try to be independent, thinking that we can provide for ourselves, nor afraid that we're not going to have enough. We can just be dependent on God for Him to provide and trust Him for what we have. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. Also, if you'd like to share a treasure God has given you by doing an episode, please contact us. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you'll find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Thank you.